Well, Sally, um, we've been talking about uh, Prigozhin for well over a year now, and after that abortive coup, I don't think any of us expected Prigozhin's life expectancy to be more than, I think we predicted three months. It looks like it's two months. And... Uh, Hotel window, it was an air crash. I think um, he left a legacy um, after that abortive coup. One would have expected President Putin to act very swiftly and decisively, but probably because of the influence that Brogozin had, not only as an oligarch, but also as the leader of the Wagner group, um, it, uh, absolutely Putin would not want to make a martyr of him. And therefore, there was a bit of tap dancing around what to do with um, Yevgeny Prigozhin what to do with these Wagner fighters, um, because, you know, Putin bluntly, his military has not delivered many battlefield successes. It's the Wagner forces that have. But all of a sudden, if you're dealing with mercenaries, you are dealing with a very difficult band of folks who are largely only interested in money. I think what we're seeing now is that uh, over the past couple of months, we've seen gradually uh, Yevgeny Prigozhin's uh, business empire gradually broken apart. Um, some of it's been bought off him, some of it's been taken off him. We've seen the Wagner forces, some of them assimilated into the Russian military, some of them uh, sent off to Africa and some of them left in Belarus. And inevitably, that was clearing the decks ready for uh, Yevgeny Prigozhin's departure. Um, and the only question in my mind is why he didn't see this coming. Uh, he seemed to be still remaining in circulation. He turned up at the, if you remember, the Africa, Russian Africa conference only a few weeks back, uh, seemed to be on the same stage as uh, President Putin. And yet, uh, what it appears now very clearly that his card was marked, his days were numbered, and it's no great surprise that he's uh, met an untimely end. We're just hearing from the Associated Press news agency that uh, the jet belonged to Evgeny Prigozhin. That is according to unconfirmed media reports. We are getting via the Associated Press. Uh, and we also are hearing that the, the plane crash took took place 60 miles north of Moscow. Uh, now, of course, uh, the future for Evgeny Prigozhin certainly uh, seemed unclear after uh, that attempted mutiny back in uh, June, Sean. I mean, there was a lot of speculation that he could meet an untimely end, but many felt that he could have also been protected simply uh, by uh, the power and, and influence that he has uh, not least within the Wagner group, but, but also the war in Ukraine. Yeah, there's a couple of points there, um, Sally, you know, one of which, after that abortive march, you know, he let's remember that Yevgeny Prigozhin um, used to be a hot dog salesman on the streets of St. Petersburg, and um, he spent, he had spent some time in prison, um, but a chance meeting with um, the President Putin uh, meant that over time he became his chef and and then the, the two of them saw a very prosperous future because the businesses that Yevgeny Prigozhin started, he won contracts directly through his patronage of President Putin. So it's their mutual benefit, that friendship. Um, and almost certainly that's why the Wagner Group of mercenaries, you know, the Russia has used those not only in Ukraine, but around the world with some influence. It, it was no great surprise that Rogozin, um won the, uh, the support and admiration of President Putin. Unfortunately, as ever with these things, sometimes the egos start to get in the way. Um, the rot started to set in when it was evident Prigozhin was able to deliver battlefield successes when General Gerasimov and Sergei guy Shogu, the uh, main army boss and the defence secretary of Russia, uh, were not able to deliver that. There was friction because they felt threatened. They stopped giving weapons and arms to Yevgeny Prigozhin. That meant Prigozhin started to become a lot more vocal about his criticism. I don't think his words were ever criticising uh, Putin directly, but more the frustration that they, Russia was involved in a war, and yet it appeared to have incompetent leaders in charge. But of course, Prigozhin just didn't know when to stop, and that ego rapidly ran himself into trouble. Who knows why he stopped his abortive uh, attempt on Moscow? He got some way up the M4, not to Bristol, but towards Moscow, and whatever happened on the phone call between um, the Belarusian leader and Prigozhin, it dissuaded him from marching further, but it does appear 
that from that moment his card was marked. And it's really just a matter of time. I don't think this was about uh, any doubt on uh, Putin's behalf. In fact, Putin was criticised by many parties not dealing with Prigozhin a lot earlier. And almost certainly the reason he didn't do that was Prigozhin had become a very powerful figure. You know, Prigozhin marshaled the forces in Africa, which is very lucrative, not only in mercenary fees, but also in some of the influence that they have over some of the resources in Africa. And uh, Putin needed him. And the challenge was how to wean off that need before you could deal with the problem that was Prigozhin. Um, but as to his actual demise, you, you talked about the potential of this flight. We don't know enough about it yet. You know, it was uh, in Moscow airspace. It had a number of other people on board. It was owned by Prigozhin. But please uh, call me a cynic, but these grey hairs come with, I don't believe in coincidences. It's no coincidence that within a couple of months, within a matter of weeks of that abortive coup, Wagner's uh, influence on the world has been decreased. Yevgeny Prigozhin has found himself increasingly isolated. And here we are reporting on his apparent demise in a crash. It does appear that the problem that was Prigozhin has now been solved by President Putin.